So we have seen the reflex actions. Reflex actions help the organisms to protect themselves from dangerous stimuli and to produce quick responses in case of different stimuli. So when an organism is able to produce a response without any brain, then what is the necessity of brain? You see the lower forms of organisms, different animals. If you see the lower phylums, Annelida, Arthropoda, in these cases, even though they don't have very well developed complex brain and all, even though they don't have well developed complex nervous system, they're able to produce the reflex action so quickly. Isn't it? If you try to catch a cockroach, any insect, it escapes so quickly from your hands. It is not easily caught by you. That means its reflex action system is very quick and very effectively responding. So this reflex actions, whatever are there in these lower level of organisms, they are evolved. So we are evolved, most evolved organism, human beings. Even though we have the basic reflexes like other smaller animals, we have some complex nervous tissue is evolved into brain, a complex organ, which can do more than the reflex actions. So reflex actions, they are up to a certain thing. But beyond that, something can be done by the nervous system. Animals, lower forms of animals, they can produce reflexes and protect themselves. But if you see the higher animals like human beings, we have that uh, intellectual power, intelligence. So we are the intelligent animals in the animal kingdom. We are able to think. We are able to memorize. We are able to learn. We are able to produce, create something. We are able to uh, put our ideas. So all this is happens in human beings. This is all possible because of the complex organ, human brain. So if you see the evolution of the nervous system in different organisms, then if you see the human beings, they have the most well-developed and complicated nervous system. Here the most important organ is the brain. If you see the classification of nervous system in human beings, the nervous system is basically categorized into two parts, CNS and PNS. What this CNS stands for? Central nervous system. And what is this PNS? Peripheral nervous system. What is central nervous system? What does it comprise of? The central nervous system is made up of two organs. Those are the brain and the spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord together comprise the central nervous system. Central nervous system is just like a CPU of a computer. You are using a desktop or a laptop. It will be having a CPU central processing unit. In the same way, in our body, the processing of various information data, the sense whatever the stimuli, whatever the changes in the environment and whatever, so it is processed in our central nervous system. That is the brain and spinal cord. What is peripheral nervous system? The brain and spinal cord are connected to different body parts through the peripheral nervous system. Again, the peripheral nervous system, PNS, is divided to two. One is cranial nervous system and the other one is spinal nerves. Here we can see the picture of brain and spinal cord. Spinal cord is the extension of the brain. So this brain and spinal cord, these two together called central nervous system. And we can see some nerves arising from the brain. We call them as cranial nerves. And we see some nerves arising from the spinal cord to the peripheral sides. We call them as spinal nerves. So this cranial and spinal nerves together, they constitute the peripheral nervous system. So this is the uh, categorization, classification of the nervous system. So now we are at this point. In the central nervous system, we are at the point of brain. So what is this brain? What is its function? What are the various parts of it? Let us see. Brain is an organ, important organ of the nervous system, which is made up of very soft tissue, which comprises a lot of water. Most of our brain is made up of water. It is very sensitive and delicate organ. As it is very sensitive, very delicate, very important, it has to be well protected. See. The delicate organs and important organs of our body are well protected by the 
skeletal system you see your heart and lungs are protected by the rib cage in your chest cavity as they are very sensitive delicate as well as very important organs in the same way the brain is also very delicate sensitive important complex organ it is protected in a hard bony skull called as cranium so cranium is a hard bony skull it is made up of some bones which do not have any joints all the bones are fixed together so it is like a shell which gives protection to the blows something may fall on your head or you may fall down and hit something so in such cases the cranium it gives protection to the brain so cranium is also called as skull inside the cranium here the brain is embedded the brain is again covered by some layers membranes so here there are some membranes that are surrounding the brain above the membranes there is a cranium these membranes are filled with some fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid so this cerebrospinal fluid it gives nourishment protection to the brain so this is how the brain is protected and this is the place where the brain is located now let us see what are the parts of the brain the brain is mainly divided into three parts according to the functions they carry out actually what are the functions of brain so we already discussed that we have some extra abilities when compared to other organisms other animals what are those we have intelligence we have different sensors different uh, centers in our brain to receive the different information to read the different information so the brain it consists of different centers to identify the colors to recognize the colors to recognize the smells to recognize the different odors or flavors to recognize different tastes to appreciate the aesthetic beauty to appreciate the music so we have different centers to listen the sounds understand the sounds analyze the sounds so this is all done in this part of the brain which we call it as fore brain so this is the upper part of the brain which mainly consists of cerebrum is called as fore brain the fore brain consists of cerebrum so here it has got various centers auditory center olfactory center for reception of smell auditory center for reception of sounds so all this so here you our sense organs are connected to these centers where the changes in the environment are analyzed and understood there and fore brain is the place where the memory the information is stored in our brain we can memorize many things you have to memorize your answers questions and different things formulae definitions all these things for your examination this is all done in your forebrain